Hello everyone, it is Bon Yuki here again today with a new video. This time we're going to be doing a playthrough of one of my favorite games, which is Capcom Generation Volume 5. The Capcom Generation Volumes were a mix of games that were basically compilations put on the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation. This game never came out in the United States for the Sega Saturn, and it did finally get a statewide release called the Street Fighter Collection Volume 2 on the Sony PlayStation. And what it is is it's basically World Warrior, Street Fighter 2 Dash or Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Dash Turbo or Hyper Fighting. And as you know these three games are what they call the CPUS1 games. Uh, interesting tidbit also is that if you are able to complete all three games you get a super versus option which is kind of um, like Hyper Street Fighter 2 where you have an addition select and inside you get little art and whatnot in collections per game it's a pretty nice compilation um, I remember picking it up years ago and it's one of my favorite games to play even to this day the Saturn port is running at a different resolution than the PlayStation one and there's also less slowdown and there's also less load time, which is customary for Sega Saturn on 2D games. Um, now, the interesting note about this version is that it is running in stereo sound, which is quite odd because a lot of the arcade purists will note that CPS-1 was mostly a mono. There were a couple later releases in CPS-1 that did add stereo, like the Punisher, for instance. But most of the times you're dealing with mono, and these games were mono. Now, what's an interesting addition is that Capcom themselves decided to add the remix soundtracks from the FN Towns Marty version, the 3DO, and it's also included from the PlayStation and Xbox versions of the Hyper Street Fighter 2 slash Street Fighter 3 collection. I believe that was called the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. So we're going to do a playthrough of my favorite Street Fighter 2 game, which would be Street Fighter 2 Dash Turbo or Hyper Fighting. Oh, well, someone's getting punched out already. It's always a mark of a good game when you see people beating each other up right in the beginning. Just like real life. Alright, we're familiar with that tune. So I'm going to go to the options to show them off. And the difficulty will leave at 4. Anything higher than that, the game gets significantly harder because it will just start reading your inputs. Um... I'll leave the sound remix on. Like I said, it is the same version that's in the FM Towns Marty and the 3DO. If you're familiar with those soundtrack and those games, this will sound very um, similar. Also, what's interesting is that because it's in stereo sound, they did remix the sound effects. So that kind of threw me off for a, for a moment when I first started playing this game. Things sounded a little odd. It wasn't as drastic as CPS1 to CPS2. But I, I remember playing this for the first time, like, wow, things sound a little weird. <clears throat> and I will play with Ryu, but I just want to show you all the characters that they are here. And they look quite good. The Saturn is running this game in 350, I believe it's 352 by 224. Which is getting closer to arcade resolution. Arcade resolution is 384 by 224. And... Because of that, you'll start seeing the characters, and they look a little chunkier. And we're playing Ryu. Typical Ryu stuff. Um, this is actually my favorite version of Ryu. Dizzy. And we get a perfect in the first round. <clears throat> now, it might look easy right now, but trust me, this game will ramp up really easy. I mean, it's not as bad as, say, uh, Grandmaster Challenge. That, um... Oh, 
Oh, come on, Geef. Fall for it. There you go. As you can hear, the Hadouken has a sound that's different. It has like a little wave sound. And I'm just going to pepper him with fireballs. I don't want to get close to Zangief at all. He's he's pretty good in this game. This is actually my favorite version of Geef. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> my favorite versions of a lot of characters in this game, like Blanca, for instance. I think Blanca's pretty good in this game. And hopefully, um, when I fight him, he doesn't give me too much of a beatdown. But as far as this conversion is, um, people consider this probably the best version of Street Fighter 2 that's not arcade. And I can see why. Um, I remember playing this game on MS-DOS back years ago. Is he dizzy? Yes, he is. And on the MS-DOS version, if you had the enough RAM, I think I had a 46 SX250 with 4 gigs of RAM on it. It did actually um, play rather well. Oh, nice. The AI in this game can be very unforgiving, I'll tell you that. See what I mean? Look at that. And it'll read your inputs and then all of a sudden you're sitting there. Great. You know, anything I do is <laughs> just going to get countered. Um, I'd say after about the third character, things starts getting pretty rough. Now that shortcut option, what it does is it makes the screen go down to just uh, a list of the fighters. And you don't see the interludes, but um, I found it on PlayStation version. It did help out quite a bit. But on Saturn, because the load time is quicker, you're not really worried about that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, the AI can be kind of a bastard. Uh, the bosses get kind of rough. See what I mean? And there goes my first round loss. Um, there are special endings depending if you beat the game without losing a round. And it also without using another quarter. So I've already lost one ending. Um, and I don't expect to do a perfect run in this game. Maybe if I put down one star. Like I said, the AI can be very unforgiving. And sometimes it'll do that. It'll just sit there and wait. I'm surprised I didn't get dizzy there. Um, if this was World War, I definitely would have been dizzy. It would have been over. Man, reuse firewalls are quick in this game. Pin him back to the corner. It's not what I try to do. And barely got out there. That I mean, like I guess that the fireballs are fast. The game itself is faster. That was one of the things that people really happy about hyper fighting is that the speed was faster because you had world warrior and you had champion edition the two previous versions were quite slow and with them being slow you had these bootleg chips that came out because it was such a big phenomenon i mean people who don't remember the arcade i remember when these games were huge they were everywhere i was from new york and everywhere i went laundromats pizza shops and a lot of times you would see these bootleg games where they would just hack the ROM and uh, put an extra chip on there and you basically had champ edition with like wild things going on. So hyper fighting was made to combat that and what they did see is that hey some of these 
things that they had in the champion edition bootlegs were actually viable in gameplay. So one of the things that was was speed. Another one was new moves. Um, for instance, you know, Ken, are you doing this? They didn't have that in champion edition or world warrior. Matter of fact, I don't think anyone had any aerial moves, but um, I believe Ken and Ryu have that. I think Chun Li has her air. Honda's um, pretty decent in this version of the game. He takes a lot of damage off. I can see now the uh, the AI is starting to really pick things up here. And a fireball dragon, you know, dragon punch trap does work, but as you can see here, Honda's not having any of it. You gotta really change your speeds up against the CPU because it'll just do random stuff like that. So, like I said, I don't expect the perfect run. I do expect the AI to give me a, a thorough beatdown when the time is right. I'm just peppering with fireballs. I don't want to get too close to Honda. He can lay on the pain real quick. But I got to make sure I punish everything he does. Otherwise, it's going to be hurt in time for me. No trip guard in this game, so... If they throw an attack, I'm able to sweep them. Look at that damage. Look at that damage. Oh! Get away from me, Honda. Is he dizzy? Go for the throw. No thrills. Just, just trying to get out of there. I think hyper fighting is when they started putting in the fireballs doing less damage. They started giving people more moves to... I'm just getting spammed here with these sumo. And he winds up throwing me for my first loss. I should have just walked up through him, but with the way the AI is in this game, there are times when you think you're going to get a hit on the Dizzy, and then there are times when you know they're just going to shake out of it like they're Akuma. So, if anyone can get Akuma dizzy, you'll see what I mean. He just, you just wiggle the controller and bam, he's already on dizzy. So that's my first loss. And like I said, I don't expect to do a perfect run. Um, it just, it's an arcade game. They're, you're not supposed to beat it on one quarter unless you know the patterns really well and or have a stick that doesn't make you jumping jab. That's for sure. Mm. Look at this stuff. This is this is good. This is good Honda stuff right here. Look at that. Honda is not having it today. He's like, nope. <clears throat> Getting a beat down from the big man. It happens. Um. But the graphics in this game and the sound and everything is top notch. Two hits. Look at that damage. Look at this. Doing mix ups. This is good stuff right here. And like I said, this is just on four. It gets a lot worse when you're playing on five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I've beaten this game on eight before. It was not fun. It was to the point where it's like, you know, I understand the challenge, but you're no longer playing a game anymore. Now you're just reacting to whatever the CPU is doing. And that was a mistake. But thankfully, I didn't get punished too heavily for that. All right, here we go, Honda. I do love low roundhouse into fireball cancel. It's always a 
a lovely thing for Ken and Ryu in this series of games. You don't see that too often in the modern games. Um, I think Alpha 2 was the last one. Better be careful here. Honda is not dizzy. Oh yeah, he was dizzy. Okay. That's one change that I do like about the Super Games. Like you can actually tell when they're dizzy. Um, you'll you'll see the stars or the skulls or whatever it is as they're coming down. Whereas in the CPS One games. It, sometimes you see like a slowdown, like they get hit and they, they kind of fall a little slower and that's just like, okay, they're dizzy. But it's it's kind of hard to tell in hyper fighting because one, I don't, haven't played this game in years. and Oh, Blanca. Time for a beatdown. Um, Blanca is probably my favorite character in this version of the game. I just really like playing with him. His up, his ball. He has an up ball that now hits on the way down. Um, I guess they felt that was too broken. So they nerfed it in Super Street Fighter. And they gave him other other moves in Super Street Fighter 2. They gave him the... Uh, I think he had... Well, I don't know if he had the rainbow roll. But they made it so... When he does the ball at his apex, he now just rolls back. So he's a lot more vulnerable. Whereas here, he just comes straight down. Kind of like Honda does. Um... Honda is invincible on the way up too, which is quite annoying as you saw. But um, like I said, this is the first Street Fighter 2 game where I felt like all the characters were pretty viable. They all had good stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I, I knew that was going to happen. Um, once the AI gets on a roll, it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're taking your money away, kid. I got two dizzies that round, and I still lost. So it just goes to show you that you can't take anything for granted. The fireballs are fast. And I think the way they compensate for that is by taking less damage, which is, I think it's a fair, comp fair thing to do. Strong beat it, huh? Oh my goodness. Now who can, who can ball as soon as they land? That's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. It's like you land and boom, you do and you do a horizontal ball. Well, thankfully I got out of that one. Uh, Guile. There used to be tricks in the old days where if you do a DP in front of Guile, he will always flash kick. I don't know if he'll do that in this game. I wouldn't be shocked if he did. But we'll see. Guile's a Street Fighter 2 mainstay. Matter of fact, in the lore, Guile's the one who won Street Fighter 2. Which is a shame to see what they've done to Gal in Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5. I mean, gameplay-wise, I, I like Gal in Street Fighter 5, but um, if anyone's played the Street Fighter 5 story mode, they've they've pretty much owned up Gal. I, I, it's kind of sad, actually. This is supposed to be the American hero. I mean, I don't expect him to save the world, but if, a bi if there's a fight with Bison, Gal should be the one taking him now, not Ryu. Especially when you consider Charlie was the one that pretty much sacrificed himself to just, you know, hurt Bison a little bit. And this is a battle of attrition with Guile. He's got these really long limbs in the air. And I'm just going to wait it out. There we go. Um, Hurricane Kick does go over the Sonic Boom. Like, uh, pretty much, I think, every version of the game. And I think uh, Hurricane Kick goes... Well, I'm not sure if it goes over Yoga Fire, but it might. Guile's jabs are not the same. Um, on this disc, you have World Warrior, and World Warrior Guile is pretty beastly. Um, 
it's not that he's great or anything. It's just everybody else is so incomplete in comparison. They always make a joke about Kyle and how he only has two moves. Well, the thing is, when you have the two moves that are really, really good, and you have these normals, like length and wise, and I'm hoping he would get dizzy. And he just waited. Like a good Kyle player should. Uh, another thing is that I like about this game and starting with Champ Edition is that Dragon Punch is knocked down. In World Warrior, they do not knock down. And whereas a Flash Kick does knock down in World Warrior all the time. And a Flash Kick in this game does knock down unless you're using the Roundhouse version. Roundhouse version hits twice, but unfortunately it does not knock down on the first hit. So it led to a lot of issues. Uh, they gave that to Guile in Champ Edition. They also gave him some more moves, like uh, they gave him a knee. So he, he's good, better in some ways, but they really toned him down. And like I said, it wasn't a tone down because in terms of, oh, we're going to ruin Guile. It's more like everyone else just stepped up their game and they got better. Whereas Guile, they just pretty much left the same. Oh, why, why would he try to flash get through that? Oh, I'll take that time over. It's not pretty, but against this AI, you take what you can get. Trust me, folks. It's, it's a lot harder than it seems sometimes. I mean, unless you're out there playing these games and remembering their patterns and stuff, um, you're just not going to be able to beat the computer that easily. They start reading your inputs, and anything you do comes out being wrong. This is my least favorite one, because this one, the barrels can actually give you a beatdown. But, thankfully, I was able to get my 20 on there and wind up with a perfect. So, the first few matches you saw, they weren't too difficult, weren't too tough. And as soon as that third character rolls around, that's where they really ramp it up. And I'll tell you what, they they jack it up. The better you do, if you're trying to do a 1cc run in this game, you be prepared for some nonsense. I mean, Bison's already nonsense, but uh, I'm just waiting for Ken to do his non- oh. That was bad. Wow, his kick went right through mine. There we go, Ken. Catch a dragon punch yourself. Sure you, sure you can. Now, what's interesting in Ken, he was really good in champ edition, did a lot of damage. So in this game, they toned down his damage a little bit, and it's a kind of like another thing. He was he's complete in championship. He's a complete character. He really doesn't need anything else. Oh my goodness, where's my combo? And that's the end of Ken. But in this game, they gave him the Air Hurricane Kick. Um, I don't think it dizzies as easy as it did in Champ Edition. They toned some of his damage down. I think they toned... Overall, I think the game, uh, there's less damage um, on certain things. And they upped the damage on, like, Honda and Blanca. Uh, now, Chun-Li, they actually gave her a projectile in this game. And it's not a charge. If you play with Chun-Li in Super Turbo or Super Street Fighter... The animation is different, and it's actually a charge move. In this game, it's half circle forward. So you can play projectile wars with Chun Li. And I'm dizzy. I mean, she's doing link combos and stuff like that. I mean, they're they're not joking around in this game. And now with her having a fireball that she could just throw out. It really changes her style of gameplay. Hyper Fighting Chun Li is kind of an interesting character. I should have waited a little bit more on that. And then there's the old fashioned Ryu Trap where you throw one fast fireball and immediately follow it with a slow. Um, because the game has hit stun and it kind of slows down after getting hit with a projectile, it's very difficult to reversal out of that second fireball. 
Um, it's a trick that a lot of people will use with Old Ken in Super Turbo. Old Ken can do that really well because his jab fireball is very slow. And he has a ridiculously good DP. Um, CPS1 characters, they're Dragon Punches. Ryu and Ken are fully invincible all the way up. Um, whereas in the later games, they're, they're invincible for like maybe the first frame or while their feet are touching the ground. But as soon as they leave the ground, you can you can give them a beating. It, it, you know, you can just hit them in the head or in, or in the leg or something. But on uh, these games, they're, they're invincible all the way up. It's going to blow through anything. So we are up to the Shadow Law bosses. And the first one we're going to see is Mike Bison. Mike Bison, who is... You know, Capcom goes back and forth whether this is Mike from Street Fighter 1. I think it's Mike from Street Fighter 1 because of the, the similarities with the storyline. And I mean, I guess he could be different. Um, there's a kind of a, a thing going on in, in Street Fighter 5 when you play the Street Fighter 1 mode uh, on the arcade. Oh my goodness. And... Like, he has a dream. His ending is like, oh, I'm, I'm not Mike. You know, they show Mike with the red shirt and the jeans. And I think he even has a Mike costume in Street Fighter V. So, you know, the jury's out on whether he's Mike or not. Um, I do remember that there was a Capcom developer, director, who did say, yes, that is Mike Bison. Um, and the reason why he's Mike Bison is because they didn't want to get sued by Mike Tyson. Well, that's why you see a lot of things with Rog, um, or you want to call him Boxer, where um, his buffalo headbutt and 